In this video, you'll learn how to bind a grid control to an entity framework data source, how to use data annotation attributes to change the way data is presented and managed by the grid, and finally, how to post cell value changes back to the data source. I've already got a project open that has a Windows form and an empty grid control on it. The solution also includes an entity framework model named Model 1 by default. You can double click it to see its visual representation on the diagram. For this video, we'll use a modified version of the AdventureWorks database. It contains only one table with just a few fields in it. For information on creating and modifying entity framework models, please refer to Microsoft's entity framework documentation. The easiest way to bind the entity framework model to the grid control is by using the data source configuration wizard. Invoke the grid control smart tag and click data source wizard. Choose the Entity Framework Technology and select the existing data connection or create a new one. I'll use the existing connection to the sample Microsoft AdventureWorks database. Click Next to proceed. On the next page, you'll be asked to choose the desired binding mode. Choose the Binding Using Binding Source Component option and click Next. Finally, select the table to be shown within your grid control. The grid control is now bound to the EF data and all the required code is already generated. You can see the automatically generated code in the CS file. Now let's run the app to see the result. Here's how the grid displays its bound data. Simple numeric formatting is applied to the price field, but it would make more sense to use currency formatting. The description field contains lengthy values, so it will be hard to edit them inside grid cells. The grid is smart enough to assign a special editor to columns bound to date time fields. Column names are simply derived from field names, and there are obviously no data validation rules applied to the grid. All that default behavior can be changed using the grid control settings. One more way to do it is by changing data field attributes or data annotation attributes. This may come in handy when you have multiple controls bound to the same data source. This way, you don't have to set up the same rules. Let's see how it works. Open the dim products CS file that contains the data model for your table. Here you can see all available data fields declared as properties of the dim product class. Now let's add data attributes to these properties and see how this changes the grid's behavior. Note that your application should reference the system.componentmodel.dataannotations library to do so. For the English product name field, add the required attribute. This will restrict end users setting empty values to this column cells and let's run the application to make sure that empty values are no longer allowed. For the list price field, add the data type attribute to indicate that these integer values should be treated as currency data. Additionally, apply the range attribute to set the minimum and maximum allowed values. For the English description field, use the data type attribute to change the data type from simple to multi-line text. The display attribute will specify the name and description for the column. Run the application to see the updated captions used for the column header and its tooltip. Also, notice that cells now use the memo edit since you specified the data type to be multi-line text. And finally, for the start date and end date columns, I apply different formatting and editing rules. The first date will be treated as a simple text value. The second column's data will remain as a date time object, but the formatting will change to display the full month, name, and year. Now let's launch the app and see that no special editor is displayed in the start date column. The end date column kept the editor, but the formatting has changed. To learn more about all existing data attributes, see this MSDN article. To make sure that cell value changes in the grid control are posted back to the data source, we'll need to add a few lines of code. Let's save the changes when the grid raises the row updated event. 
We'll need to access the data source context, thus we'll change the variable scope so it's available to all methods in the form class. In the handler, all you need to do is call the save changes method. Now let's run the application and change a value in the dealer price column. We will also move focus to another row to make sure that the row updated event is raised. Then close the application and let's run it again. You'll see that the value has been saved. And that's it. Thanks for watching and thank you for choosing DevExpress.